These five flagship smartphones are all powered by different chipsets. And today we'll be comparing the Huawei Pure 70 Ultra, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Vivo X100 Pro, Pixel 8 Pro, and iPhone 15 Pro Max in three different benchmarks where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. The Huawei is running a Kirin 9010 chipset which uses an older 7 nanometer process node and has the lowest clock speed here. The other three androids sit on 4 nanometer nodes with the Samsung running an overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 CPU, the Vivo A Dimensity 9300 chip with no efficiency cores and the Pixel A Tensor G3 which utilizes 9 physical cores. The iPhone on the other hand runs a 3 nanometer A17 Pro CPU and boasts the highest clock speed of the lot. All the androids pack in LPDDR5X RAM but only the Samsung and Vivo make use of UFS 4.0 storage, while the iPhone is kitted with LPDDR5 RAM and NVMe storage. All of them have LTPO displays which can refresh between 1 and 120 Hz, they have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the Pixel's adaptive battery off to boost performance, while the iPhone has no performance mode. Today we will be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, and 3D Mark Wildlife. Life Extreme, and in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes, which devices will come out on top in terms of efficiency and cooling, and will Qualcomm and MediaTek continue their winning streak? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get into things, we're going to be checking out the percentages of their batteries at the start of the test, which we'll once again compare at the end of the test to see how efficient they are. We'll be using an emissivity level of 0.5 on an infrared heat gun, and we're sitting at a room temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius. We'll be testing out their temperatures between each benchmark test, but they've all been sitting idle for a while now, and the coolest so far is the Samsung and iPhone, which are matched, and the hottest is the Vivo X100 Pro. Kickstarting things off with our first benchmark, that being an Tutu version 10, just to let you guys know a little bit of a background of version 10, which will most likely be upgraded to version 11 early next year. CPU has been changed to optimize support for multi-core parallel processing. GPU is now based on Unreal Engine 4 with two new 3D test scenes, a high stress test known as Seasons, which is this, and Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs, which is the next one. Ordinary GPU is pretty much going toward the Huawei and the Pixel over here. Since they do have lower GPUs and lower main core clocks in terms of their CPU performance as well. The Huawei and the Pixel aren't quite as strong in terms of performance when compared to the Samsung Vivo and iPhone, but unless you are a serious gamer, you're not going to notice too much of a difference on the daily. They both very much feel like flagship phones, just like the other three devices here. Now, in terms of getting back into Antutu, what has changed in terms of storage when it comes to ROM, that being main storage, they have optimized this to improve test efficiency, and RAM has now been divided into bandwidth and latency to clearly demonstrate LPDDR performance. Of course, we have LPDDR5 X RAM modules on all the Android phones and LPDDR5 RAM modules on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, when it comes to user experience, they've added PDF document processing capabilities, they've added processing capabilities of large pixel images above 2K, and they've also added decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 to more comprehensively evaluate the device's video processing ability which is actually very interesting since they now include editing since there are a couple of people out there which edit videos on their phones. It's nice to do on the go, but it's not for me. I prefer to stick to my Mac or my PC. Now, I know what many of you guys are thinking. You can't exactly compare iOS to Android when it comes to Antutu, but you still can't help but want to test and see the performance and they have actually become a lot more comparable with the latest Antutu benchmark and of course you can also compare them when it comes to Geekbench and to 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme which we'll get to a little bit later on. But after Antutu, in terms of temperature, the Vivo has increased by the most a whopping amount, 23 degrees Celsius, and the iPhone has increased by the least, but I am still pretty impressed with the Huawei, Samsung, and Pixel in terms of temperatures here. It seems like the Vivo is getting hotter, but that wasn't really the case with my battery drain tests. There were other phones that got quite a bit hotter than it, but it is pushing itself to the absolute limits, and that Dimensity 9300 chipset actually has no efficiency cores, so it doesn't really help it. Well, it does help it when it is just being used on the daily, but when it is used 
for serious strenuous tasks such as benchmarking or gaming it does push itself a lot which generates more heat in order to accumulate such good performance and of course it takes a knock in the battery department as well now after geekbench version 6 the pixel actually jumped up by the most and the iphone once again jumped up by the least now jumping into our last benchmark here that being 3d mark wildlife extreme we unfortunately cannot test out solar bay since there is no ray tracing accelerated modules found inside the huawei and the pixel and the pure 70 ultra the huawei that is also cannot run the new nomad steel light benchmark test which i really want to show you guys on video it's really awesome make sure you try to test it out on your phone if you haven't done so already now an interesting thing here about the kira 9010 chip found inside the pure 70 ultra is that when you check on an app it actually shows that it has 12 cores but that's not the case it's actually an octa core cpu but its main and performance cores are actually split in half using something called hyperthreading and that's what shows the 12 cores so it is a bit better for multitasking which you guys will see a little bit later on when it comes to geekbench scores but as for right now we're wrapping up a 3d mark wildlife extreme which by the way renders at 4k resolution and getting to our final temperatures over here you'll notice that the pixel 8 pro actually ended off the coolest here and the vivo once again ended off the hottest but it added the most with this time the huawei adding the least actually slightly throttling a bit now when we take a look at the overall device temperature the pixel 8 pro really surprised me here it ended off the coolest and added the least in terms of temperature but it wasn't that much cooler when compared to the iphone samsung and huawei though the vivo was pushed to its limits getting a max of 56 degrees in celsius and adding a whopping 26.3 when it comes to battery life once again the vivo fell off the bandwagon here dropping by 12 percent though it does have the largest battery so it had the worst milliamp hour per minute drain of 23.14 now this wasn't the case in my recent battery drain test videos be sure to check those out but it seems like when it is pushed to its absolute cpu and gpu limit then it tends to drop quite quickly so if you're going to be a gamer on the daily then this is probably not the phone for you the huawei and pixel impressed me quite a bit here with a nine percent drain but while the iphone had a ten percent drain matching that of the samsung it actually had the best milliamp hour per minute reading since it has the smallest battery here now finally getting to and two two scores fifth place no surprise was the huawei Pure 70 Ultra and it is kind of running a changed up CPU from five generations ago when Huawei were actually making in-house chipsets so I'm not too surprised it had the worst CPU GPU and user experience but the Pixel actually had the worst memory and placed in fourth but it did have quite a bit of a higher score third we have the iPhone 15 Pro Max and quite a bit ahead of that is the S24 Ultra and quite a lot ahead of all of them is the Vivo X100 Pro placing in first with the best scores in every segment placements are slightly changed up with Geekbench version 6 single core performance here we have the iPhone in first place which is quite a lot ahead of second place that being the Samsung third was the Vivo not too far off the Samsung fourth we have the Pixel 8 Pro here which is quite a bit ahead of the Pure 70 Ultra but when it comes to multi-core performance things are seriously changed up the Vivo puts the iPhone in second place since the Vivo now places first only with a little bit higher than that of the iPhone but the multi-core performance due to the lack of efficiency cores on the Vivo make it a strong contender Tender. third place was then the samsung which is not too far off the vivo and the iphone but this time the huawei places ahead of the pixel and the huawei was quite a bit ahead in terms of multi-core performance probably due to hyper threading built into its cpu now when it comes to gpu performance when testing out 3d mark wildlife extreme there is no doubt a huge difference between the flagship chips found inside the samsung vivo and iphone and the more budget-friendly kind of ai based chips found inside the the Huawei and the Pixel. Now the Pixel actually outdid the Huawei by quite a bit this time around since its GPU is quite a bit stronger. Though the Vivo placed ahead of the Samsung and the iPhone with a little bit of a better FPS result when compared to the Samsung and leaps ahead of the iPhone which placed in third here. Now here is an overall outlook of all the tests and where they placed throughout the tests and even though some of them placed ahead of others in certain benchmark tests showing their strengths, the Vivo 
Evo overall impressed me the most of course with its Dimensity 9300 chipset since it completely lacks efficiency cores, giving it that super boost that it needed, but it does in fact dip down in terms of temperature and battery performance. That said, it most frequently placed in first with the Samsung most frequently placing in second, then the iPhone, then the Pixel, and then dead last, the Huawei. And while the Huawei is a very expensive device, but all of them are pretty expensive for that matter, it still performs extremely fast on the daily and camera performance between these devices as well as battery performance are very different. Be sure to stay tuned for my upcoming battery drain tests and camera comparison videos. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.